Hello, I was going to film a different video today, but my computer said no, so this is what we're doing. Um, welcome to the Mega AU. Uh, the Mega AU is the AU that me and my little sister Joy have created over the past few years playing through the game. We're done with the game and we're replaying the trilogy and we have a big giant AU where all the things that we don't like get fixed. It's great and I'm gonna explain it to you and if you like the Mega AU you can take pieces parts of it for your own drawing, writing, whatever you do. You can have it. What's mine is yours. So um, let me let me see what I can do here. So the Mega AU has four pillars. One, two, and these two pillars, oh no, are the main pillars. And then there's two sort of, ooh, and this is wobbly because it's not really holding the AU up. It's more so, it's just, it's just a fun part. It's just a fun part. So... This is going to sound very crazy, but the main thing that the Mega AU hinges on is Machi Tobai from Turnabout Serenade in Apollo Justice, the little kid. And honestly, the Mega AU was originally called the Machi-verse. That's how hard it hinges on him. But then we kept adding stuff and we said we need a new name. So the first pillar of the Mega AU is oh no i think this is offensive the first pillar of the mega au is machi tobai and so the reason this is the first pillager wrong the reason this is the first pillar is because i'm not gonna touch the trilogy i might touch the trilogy a little bit like rise from the ashes but only because i like it because i think the trilogy is really good and I'm, I, don't, I wouldn't change it. I would leave it the way it is, mostly. Um, the f so this is the first place that the AU really branches off from the canon. And it doesn't even branch in that big of a way, but um, we s it starts slow. And it sort of has ripple effects. The whole point of this, honestly, is kind of to wiggle Machi loose so we can have him at our disposal for later stuff. But, okay, so what happens in the Machi-verse is at the end of Turnabout Serenade, when Darian is getting indicted, how do you say it? And he says to Machi, I'll give you anything, I'll give you a house made out of pianos. If Machi there had been like, sure, that sounds like a good deal, then that's how this goes. So they run away together. Oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, they run away together, and they, oh no, oh no, like, s they start a new life together in the woods, and it's like Maximum Ride style, um, and they're, Darian's like a combination of, like, brother and dad to Machi, and they take care of each other and they love each other and it's cute. Um, let me zoom in on Darian for a second. Here, let me label my pillar. I'm using a mouse, which may be not the best choice, but I didn't want to get out my drawing tablet. And my touchpad is worse. Oh no. There we go, that's perfect. So, let me zoom in on Darian for a second. So, in this, in the head cannons of this AU, I guess, him and Clavier have like teenage love and then like break up and it's sad and Clavier like writes music about it, I guess. But then after Darian and Machi run away and go live life in the woods as outlaws, 
then like Clavier in his heart starts to become so sad and he looks for Derry and Amachi, but what he does is he like goes to Virginia and he convinces them to change the law so that it like doesn't kill children or something. So then eventually after he changes the law, he finds them and he's like, you can come out of hiding now. Machi's not going to die. So Darian, in this AU, Darian can either go to jail or he can also like be free, I don't care. You can spin this as more like self defense than it was in the canon. That's up to you. Follow your heart, dude. We have it both ways sometimes. Different stories, different ways, whatever. Okay, that's the first pillar. Second pillar, and this one, we're taking we're taking more drastic steps. We're splitting off from the canon more aggressively. Um, is that I I this I like dual destinies, but I really don't like the Phantom. So we're gonna change the way the things happened with the Phantom. To me, it feels like um, like they'd written it so that Bobby was killed, like maybe sometime like right before or during the cosmic turnabout and then because there's like a weird personality shift that happens and then like later on they came back and they're like oh shoot no that's not gonna work with the plot we have to change it but they left the personality shift in and it it feels very strange to me um so i think that he should be not the phantom and i'm gonna put in a different phantom and um, Bobby can just be alive and happy. So, the second pillar has Bobby O. K. That's his hair. He does not look good. Um, yeah, that's good enough. Right? Uh, it's got Bobby, and then we're gonna have a new phantom. This is her hair. Like a ponytail. And her name in our AU, her name is Angelica Jeanette. Angelica being like angel or spirit because of the phantom. And Jeanette being like from Gaina, I believe, meaning like smooth or soft or white. So like her innocence, I guess, or her seeming innocence. Um, so like all of like, the whole game would happen the same way. Like, all the way up through almost to the end of Turnabout for Tomorrow. Happens the exact same way. Except it, everything phantomy that's happening, Angelica is doing instead of Bobby. But then, like, in the trial, Bobby's like, no, I did it. Like, sacrificing himself for Simon. In this AU, the headcanoniness is that, like, Bobby's been Simon's parole officer forever. And they're, like, super close and they, like, love each other. And he's like, no... I did it. it. It wasn't Simon, it was me. And he, like, gets dragged away, gets arrested. And then, like, when Apollo comes back, like, he can solve it and be like, no, it was Angelica. And everyone's like, wow, that's so cool, and Bobby is so alive. So, let me write on this pillar. Oh, no, no, no. I'm running out of room. There we go. So you can have any phantom you want, but ours is Angelica, but if you want a different one, if you feel something different in your heart, go there, dude. Write what's in your heart. Okay, different phantom. And then, the reason we're doing this, well, I haven't even gotten into the reasons we're doing this, is so that we can ship Black Bright, and it can be cute and not creepy. Because... If Bobby dies and, like, the person Simon thinks he loves is actually the Phantom, like, that's weird. That's really weird. But, like, Bobby can be just normal and nice and Simon's parole officer and then Simon gets out and he, like, doesn't know how to live his life and they learn to live life together and it's beautiful. So... These are the two main pillars. So what happens with Machi is he gets out, he goes to high school, I guess, and he meets Pearl Faye. 
okay? Tell me this isn't a good match. And they get married, and they have a daughter named Morning Glory. Um, her name's Morning Glory Faye Tobai, and she is perfect in every way. She's sort of a Dahlia-esque child in that she's, like, creepy and stoic and kind of mysterious, and she's got powers, but people don't realize. But, um, I meant to psychopath code her, but I think I might have accidentally autism coded her? Which is fine. Like, I like the way she turned out, so we're rolling with it. Um... And then the other thing that happens is Simon and Bobby get married, heart, heart, heart. They have love, and then they have a kid via a surrogate. Sure, right? And her name is Rowan Blackquill. But Rowan's thing is that she has wings, okay? And this isn't like a Wings AU thing. I mean, it's technically a Wings AU, but that's not what I'm trying to say. She... Before she's born, when she's still, like, in the test tube, I guess, they run into Morning Glory, who is, like, obsessed with birds at this time. So Morning Glory is maybe, like, two, three years older than Rowan, and she has all these magic powers, but people don't realize yet, obviously, because she's a little toddler and she doesn't really have control over them. But she's obsessed with birds, and she sees the doctor pushing this cart, and she sees, like... I don't know what symbol it would be, maybe biohazard. And she's like, oh, this is crazy. And the doctor's like, yeah, there's going to be a baby. And she's like, a, a, a bird baby. She's obsessed with birds. And she like genetically changes the material of the baby to have wings. Okay, that's cute, right? Rowan has wings. That's fun. Fun and cute. Use Putting the fae powers to good use. Um, and Morning Glory and Rowan are friends. And it's beautiful. Um... Now, I hear you saying, you still have two squiggly pillars, and you haven't used either of them yet. Okay, I will use them. So the one over here, we'll put over here, is going to be that Shelly the Killer, bet you weren't expecting that, stops killing people, at least for a while. <coughs> oh, this is not good. Oh, he looks so sad. Stops killing people, at least for a while. And adopts a kid, because he's got to have another de-killer to carry on the family name. I have a whole story, like a novella, about the backstory of Shelley and the de-killer before him. If you're curious, I'll put it on Wattpad. If you want to read my writing, say, put it on Wattpad, I'll do it. Um, so he needs another de-killer, so he stops murdering, stabbing, shooting, strangling poisoning and other types of killing people and he settles down and he opens a little crepes store and his son is named Colton the killer and his son is deaf hard of hearing and like he they meet Morning Glory at some point I don't know what point but Morning Glory also knows sign language because she's um, non-verbal as a kid, and they teach it to her to try and get her to communicate, which doesn't really work, except now she knows sign language, so she is able to talk to Colton, they become friends, and then they become more than friends, and antics ensue, um, and then our other squiggly pillar over here, this is, I can't remember what she looks like, but this one is very important. Um, this one is branching away from Miles Edgeworth Investigations 2. And this is the good Patricia Rowland AU. So in the canon, Patricia Rowland is... Does she have big lips? Is that what it is? That doesn't look right. I don't know. I don't know what Patricia Rowland looks like, dude. Maybe that is right. Okay, here's her coat made out of lemurs. So, in the canon, uh, Patricia Rowland is evil, and like, Simon Keyes is evil, and Horace Knightley is kind of evil, and so in the good Patricia Rowland AU, Simon Keyes is less evil. He's still very depressed and sad, 
but things happen differently and thus forth the whole plot of My II II happens differently. These two things are kind of interwoven. The plot of My II II happens differently, My II II being Miles Edgeworth investigations. My for Miles, I for Edgeworth, spelled E-I, I for investigations. So the plot of My II II happens differently because Patricia Rowland is good and Simon is not murdering people, etc. But also, the plot of My II II makes Patricia Rowland good because there's sort of like a t like a time loop happening. I love time travel. If you know me, I'm a I'm a big time travel trope guy. I think it's super cute, fun, quirky, and cool, and I put it into everything. So you know, I had to put time travel in the good Patricia Rowland AU, and the way that it works is the sort of the hinge point of this is that. Isaac Dover slash Pierre Hoquet, you know how he like comes up in the fountain? In the, in the AU, he comes up in the fountain, but the fountain, okay, the fountain is the fountain of youth, or like, there's, I don't know if it's scientifically explainable or purely magical, but either way, he's not dead. He's healed from the conch on the back of his head. He was not fully dead when he was put in the water, or the ice, I guess it was, but say it came from the same water, it doesn't matter. Anyway, he, maybe he's underwater somewhere the whole time. Everything happens slightly differently. Um, but this is gonna be, this is the beauty of it, is because it's a loop, he, like, th can set it into motion. So, he comes up out of the water, he's like, oh my gosh, but he's alive. So, they're all like, ah, oh, you're not dead! And then he time travels back to attempt to save his wife, Horace's dad's life, unsuccessfully. He tries, she lives a little bit longer, and she's like maybe a science teacher. She lives long enough to be nice to Patricia Rowland, who's the right age to be her student. And then Patricia Rowland is, has like, life revelation and then she grows up to be nice so like Simon and Horace grow up to be nice so like they're there when Pierre comes up out of the fountain and um so my I too is just different and different stuff happens um Blaze is still evil he's still the main villain uh I'm gonna have to put a spoiler warning on this video Blaze is still evil he's still the main villain but you know because Simon's not there, the plot is more like punch out Blaze, and there's still like parent stuff to be resolved. We could do something with John Marsh. I don't know. I haven't a hundred full, a hundred percent fully fleshed it out yet. If you have ideas what you think should happen in the Good Patricia Roland Day, you you tell me in the comments because I maybe I'll put it in there. Because I love Simon Keys. I love Simon Keys. You should watch my Simon Keys cosplay. Um, it's it the timing is messed up on it maybe i'll try and fix it and re-upload it it doesn't matter um so that's these are the four main pillars of the mega au and there are lots of other little moments do i have an eraser brush this is like the first time i've ever used ms paint but i wanted to use something my computer could handle and also i'm drawing with a mouse who cares okay here's the eraser how big is it? How do I change the size? Oh no, I have to do this by hand? No! I'm sorry, I'm erasing the Mega AU, you guys. Oh! Okay, yes! It worked! Okay. Back to work. So, there are a number of mini head cannons, I guess, because they don't some of them are a little bit AU, but they don't really change the canon. Like, they don't really break from the canon any anywhere. They're just like, we think this should happen. So I'll share some of the little things we think should happen in the Mega AU. So one is, you know we out here shipping Rightworth. Because if you're not out here shipping Rightworth, you better have a good explanation for yourself. Okay, there's Phoenix and Edgeworth. Yay! And so, we have one where Phoenix and Edgeworth 
move into both sides of a duplex together, but they don't realize it until they move in. So Phoenix is like, I'm broke, I'm Phoenix, I need somewhere to live. And Edgeworth is like, I'm sick of being rich, I need to move into a smaller house, live a smaller life, learn some life lessons, everything's too stressful for me. So they move into a duplex together. If you don't know, a duplex is like, it's, it's, it's in between a house and an apartment. It's two houses smooshed together into the same building. And they have like separate front doors. If they have garages, separate garages. They're split down the middle by like a fire smothering wall. So if one burns down, the other one won't burn down. You can't get through them, but they're in the same physical building, if that makes sense. Um... And that one's called the Red Door Story because in the in the in the story the house has a red door, I guess, and they're like moving in together and they're neighbors and they're like, We're moving into the same house. It's very crazy and super fun. You'd probably like it. Another thing we definitely had canon is Robin, you know Robin from Turnabout Academy in is it Dual Destinies? Okay. Robin, we really thought they were gonna go for this in the game, but they didn't. Um, we had canon trans Robin. And me and Joy, my sister Joy, both thought this was gonna be canon. But they were too coward, I guess. They were not ahead of their time. And... That is so sad. So, this is AU a little bit. Robin should have been trans. It wouldn't change the plot, except it would make Athena more mean. Athena, message for Athena Sykes only. Stop revealing people's secrets in court when they don't want you to. That's mean. Like, do that privately. And then, like, not in front of people. Like, when she revealed that Athena had wrong. When she revealed that Juniper had a crush on Apollo in front of the court, there was no reason to do that. He's your co-worker. Don't make it weird. Um, that's all I have to say about that. And then one more that I had canon about. This one's in one of my animatics, so if you've seen the My OCD animatic, you probably know this, but Damon Gant, oh no, that is so lopsided. Look, I know how to draw him because I, I did the animatic. Beard. Beard time. Um, Damon Gant, like, I think he, at the end of Rise from the Ashes, I think he was, like, a pretty decent villain. Like, he was, he had pretty good motives. Like, it made sense. I wasn't mad about it, except for that freaking moment where they're like, what's the number on the ID card? Same number as the number to his safe. And the number was like seven sevens in a row. He didn't have to admit that seven sevens in a row was his ID number. And like, oh, he went to the evidence room. Also, so let me interrupt my tangent with another tangent. Why did he say, I always go to the evidence room just like I always go to the evidence room alone, just like I always go to the bathroom alone? He didn't go to the evidence room alone, implying that he doesn't go to the bathroom alone. What do you mean? Straight up? What do you mean? Anyway, other tangent. He, all he had to do was say, like, seven sevens in a row is my lucky number. And he would have not been arrested. Like, he is too smart for that. And I don't think he should have said that. So I think that Phoenix should have lost that trial. And Damien Gant should have gotten away with it. Like, everybody knows that he did it. But he still gets away with it. And then he retires. And then he turns himself in. You should watch the My OCD animatic. It's cute and it's sad. And it will probably make you sad. It needs a better thumbnail. Okay. If you see the thumbnail, don't say anything about it. Because I'll be embarrassed. That was like the first animatic I posted, bro. Shut up. Anyway. Um, I think that he was smarter than that. And he should have gotten away with it. But I also think that he should feel guilty for what he has done. Because he killed Bruce Goodman. And Bruce Goodman's cute. And he's Jake's best friend. I really like Rise from the Ashes, if you can't tell. I wrote um, a novella about 
Angel Star called the Cough Up Queen. I could put that on Wattpad. Do you want that on Wattpad? Would you read that? If you want that, put it in the comments and say, I will read that. And I'll put it on Wattpad because no one ever reads my freaking writing. Read my writing. It's good. Von Karma is up there. It's about young Manfred Von Karma. And it's the saddest thing you've ever read. Do you want to cry about Manfred Von Karma? Read my writing. You will like it. I promise. If you don't like it, I will pay you a bazillion dollars. Okay, that last part was a lie. I don't have a bazillion dollars. But it is really good. Um, so these are some of the changes I would make to the canon if I had permission. Um, if you want to read about this stuff, maybe I'll put it up. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening to my ramblings. If you want a mega AU part two video where I talk about more weird head cannons that we have and more weird AUs that we have, I will definitely make one. We'll see how part one does. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm supposed to tell you to like and subscribe, but I'm not gonna do that. You, you follow your heart. You like the video if you liked it, and you dislike it if you disliked it. And if you want to subscribe to my channel and you want to see more Ace Attorney videos, you subscribe. And if you say, this is stupid and I'm leaving, then leave. And I will be happy for you because I trust you to make your own decisions. Okay, goodbye. Thank you so much.